This is the soldering iron I bought from Amazon for $7. Well, $6.99. It does look as though it has increased in price by $0.60. Cent. And it seems Amazon is selling 100 plus of these a month. Now my advice, don't buy one. The use case for this iron is so tiny, almost no one should be buying it. Certainly not 100 people a month. It does get hot, it will melt solder, and it is somewhat of an adjustable temperature soldering iron. So it is kind of amazing that it can be bought for somewhere between 7 and $8. But what could possibly be inside it to sell for such a tiny amount? It does come apart very easy. After removing the tip retainer and tip, the retainer mount unscrews from the front of the iron. The temperature adjustment knob just pulls off. And then the entire assembly pulls right out of the case. And there it is. It doesn't look like much, but it's $7. Looks like IEC wire colors for the power cord. It does look like a ceramic heating element, just like it's advertised as. And it's not soldered or spot welded to the PCB. Its leads are in some sockets. At room temperature, resistance of the heating element is about 146 ohms. Let me heat it up some and see what I get. I've got the hot air set at 850 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% airflow. This isn't going to get it near as hot as when it's powered on. Resistance changes quite a bit with temperature, as I expected it would. When the iron is cold, it pulls maybe 70, 80 watts, and as it gets hot, it will drop to around 25 watts. And that has to do with the resistance of the heating element increasing as it gets hot. So with a bit of hot air, I see close to 250 ohms. Under power, it will be even higher than that, I'm quite sure. Blue and brown AC line colors are the IEC requirements, I believe. Though this is a non-polarized plug, so the line in neutral could turn out to be either color. That's why you can never rely on the wire color for neutral. It can lead to a nasty surprise. I do believe it's copper wire. It looks like it. Writing on the wire says 2 times 0.75 square millimeters for the conductors. So a little bit smaller than 18 gauge wire. Plenty big for this iron. Outer jacket for the wire is probably PVC. It melts very easy. Not what you want for a soldering iron, but it was $7. The PCB is pretty nice looking board. Double sided. The only part on the back side of the board is one of the sockets for the heater. There are eight SMD components plus the two socket pins. This is my schematic drawing of the circuit, and it looks like a light dimmer circuit. I don't see a number on DB3, but I would expect it to be a diag. Of course, there are no snubber components, so the noise spikes I see on the scope, at least some of it is probably there. It's not just my hookup wiring. Other than the LED, it's about the bare minimum needed. That makes this more of an adjustable power circuit, and that will lead to a temperature difference. Here is the waveforms for the power to the iron with the temperature control set to minimum. It has reached a stable temperature. The V average value should be very close to the watts the iron is pulling. The yellow waveform is the current through the iron with one millivolt being one milliamp. The green waveform is the voltage going to the iron. The math one waveform is the current multiplied by the voltage. And at this setting, it's pulling around 12 watts. Now if I turn the temperature control up to maximum, power goes up to around 30 watts, but only for a short time. As the heater gets hot, the power continues to drop. At a usable soldering temperature, it pulls around 24 watts. So it should not be listed as a 60 watt soldering iron. Could say it's a 30 watt iron, and that wouldn't be stretching the truth too far. But it is really an adjustable 12 to 25 watt soldering iron, and you can't do a lot of soldering at 25 watts. Another bit of information I can get from the waveform is an idea of the heater resistance when it's hot and it looks like peak current and peak voltage occur at the same time, and it looks to be very close to 300 milliamps at the peak. And the peak voltage is about 176 volts. Now there is a track drop between this and the heater, but a volt or two is not going to make much difference. So that gives me around 580 ohms for the heater. Seems like a reasonable value. It looks like a nice ceramic heater. The only number on the heater is a 6 or 9. My guess is it's a 6. 
I don't see anything that might ID the manufacturer of it. You might think $7 could buy that. The thing is, $7 got this thing delivered to my door. And I'm absolutely sure most of the $7 didn't go to the manufacturer of this iron. I was curious what this thing cost wholesale. From seeing what's inside of it, I was thinking it has to be two and a half, three dollars $3. But then it would have to be more than $7. So I did a bit of hunting on Alibaba, and I believe I found the identical iron. I was way off on my price estimate. If you want 100000 of these, you can get them for $0.95 cent each. I don't see how this can possibly be manufactured for that low of a cost. I even double checked the wires in the power cord. They look to be copper, so I think that would be about 10 cent worth of copper in the power cord. I don't see the cord being less than 15 cent. The triac and trimmer, I would expect 4 to 5 cent each. The rest of the parts, probably less than 1 cent each. Might be able to get the three resistors, diac, capacitor, LED, and the two sockets for another 4 to 5 cent. PCB has to cost a couple of cent. The heater has to be much cheaper than anything I was thinking. Maybe less than 20 cent. I don't see how. There is still the ABS case that has to be molded, along with the cord strain relief piece, and a molded knob with a printed sticker on it. The sleeve where you hold the iron is supposed to be silicon, and it feels like it is, and I couldn't get it to melt even at 840 degrees Fahrenheit, so not a cheap plastic. And then all the stainless steel parts to hold the tip, not to mention the tip itself. The tip that came on the iron seems to be plated brass, again matching the Alibaba description. I don't see how it can be manufactured for 95 cent, let alone sell for 95 cent. But the journey is not over yet. The wholesaler has to get the shipment over to the U.S. If 100,000 would fit in a 20-foot shipping container, maybe 2 to 3 cent per iron, or a bit more nowadays. Then the wholesaler adds a stand, and I'm being loose with the word stand here, adds a pack of five tips. The tips in the pack are different than the tip that came on the iron. They don't seem to be brass for one thing, so probably from a different manufacturer. Then put all the pieces in a box and get the boxes to the Amazon fulfillment centers. On the getting the product to the fulfillment centers, I don't think I've ever read how that works. If anyone knows, I would love a comment on it. Does the seller have to ship it to the different fulfillment centers? Or does Amazon pick it up and distribute it themselves? I've never really thought about it. So all in all, it's kind of a miracle can get a working soldering iron to your door for $7. Again, don't buy it. It's not a good soldering iron. It's an incredibly cheap soldering iron. That I'm still a little puzzled about how it can be produced so cheaply. Thank you for watching.